Hi, I'm Deary, and I've read it before. Hi, I'm Deary, back to talk to you about the death of Discworld. Now, a couple of things I'm going to say. Death is officially an anthropomorphic personification. The other thing is that he has antagonists. And his antagonists are the auditors. And at the beginning of Reaper Man, they get death fired. Yep, death's out of work. The cover kind of gives it away. He does end up on a farm and he does end up um, harvesting the wheat. So that is uh, the very, very barest of bones of the death portion of this story. The other part of the story is about what's happened to all of that life that isn't being taken away. There's nowhere for it to be, so it takes a couple of avenues. One of them is it starts imbuing things that aren't alive with life. Another is that, well, it kind of develops an entirely new life form and the life cycle of that life form. And a tiny bit of it belongs to a wizard, Wendell Poons, who was supposed to die and in fact did die, but his wizardly enhanced self couldn't find anywhere to go so went back to his body. Things happen, the wizards obviously figure out that things aren't normal and do their best to figure that out and solve it. Now if death is the subseries you've gone with first, this is pretty much your first interaction with the wizards. <laughs> They're bonkers. They're a lot of fun in facing off against the life force they use many different tools, including a compost heap. And again, I can't really tell you any more than that without giving away plot points or gags. And I don't want to ruin either of those. Wendell, on the other hand, in his attempts to figure out how to be dead, ends up meeting the Fresh Start Club. And I desperately want to tell you about the Fresh Start Club, but once I start, it takes up way too much time and none of it will make sense anyway until you read the book. So I will merely tell you they exist, that their members are wonderful, and you'll meet many of them again in later books. So that's what Reaper Man is about. It is about what happens when the collector of life isn't there. What happens to the belief that formed it? What happens to things that should be dead and aren't, and things that aren't alive that are? The nature of life is really, really thought about here. So that's Reaper Man. Soul music is a different beast entirely. In just another five books, Terry Pratchett has discovered an entirely new layer of the disc. One of the things that came out of Reaper Man was the death of rats. Now, I mentioned him briefly in my previous video. He is the skeletal rodent in a cowl with a scythe. And in soul music, death is once more not doing his job. This time, the reason is some mental health issues. He's working on some stuff, and I can't tell you what it is because spoilers. Anyway, he's having a mental health break. He didn't tell anyone, <laughs> which is a bit of a problem. But there isn't a buildup of life force that there was last time. And it takes Albert and the death of rats a little while to find out why. And it's because the narrativium has decided that even though death isn't doing his job, there's someone else out there that can. And that someone is Susan, his granddaughter. Now Susan is very ordinary in that she is trying really hard to be ordinary. And she has to, because if she doesn't concentrate, she becomes invisible. 
And this is just one of the very many indicators that suggests that she's inherited some unusual things. So by the time Albert and the death of rats have figured out what's going on, it's getting very urgent. So Albert goes off on his mission to see if he can find what death's doing, and the death of rats is sent after Susan. Binky has already found her because Binky is superb. So that side of the story, the death core cast side of the story, is about finding what death is doing and being with Susan as she tries to do death's job. The other part of the story is the music. And the music is a really big part of the story. We meet a young man, he has promised it his soul. Through an unfortunate um, coincidental set of events, he, similar to Wendell Poon's in the previous book, he ends up being not dead. But this time he's instead become powered by music. It's not life force that's keeping him going. It's music. And it's powerful music. And this music is contagious. And this music is um, disc altering, <laughs> if we put it that way. And this is where soul music has both its strength and its weakness. The references to music in soul music are multitudinal on every level from jokes and gags about song titles to cultural events to tabloid headlines. If you know anything about music from between the birth of rock and roll and say the mid 80s, there's going to be things in here that jog your memory. Poses that became synonymous with particular musicians. Um, poking fun at some of the more outrageous behaviours of musicians. Band names. And the more you know, the funnier it is just because you see them. And if you don't see them, it doesn't matter because they're still funny just in the book. But if you know what a particular musician's manager looks like, then you see the gag. But because of that, the flip side is obviously the less you know, the fewer layers you find. And that I find quite frequently when I talk to people about soul music, where they think they know a lot about rock and roll, but they may only know the music. They might not know about the tabloid news or what somebody's manager looks like. And so the book can read flatter than usual in a Discworld book at this stage of the series. Because by now, Terry's got us used to those multiple layers of jokes where you don't have to get all of them, but there's enough there that you're going to catch enough to find it funny. The reliance on music rather than the more broadly encompassed everything <laughs> that's in a Discworld book can limit some of that humour. And that's where it does fall down sometimes. But... That said, even if you only get the most basic level of joke in soul music, it's still a fun story. So those are my two Discworld novels for this week, which leaves me two in the death series and logic would say I did two today, I'll do two next time. Except the two that are left are, soul, are Hogfather and Thief of Time and neither one deserves to be shortchanged. Like if you like it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and well, have a great week. Mm -hmm.